On today's episode of A Few Minutes of History, we shall be talking about the Einsatzgruppen. This episode does come with a disclaimer warning. Some listeners and viewers may find the contents disturbing. With the start of Operation Barbarossa in June 1941, the scale of Einsatzgruppen mass murder operations vastly increased. The main targets were the Communist Party, Soviet state officials, gypsies, the disabled, but and above all, Jews. In the build-up to Barbarossa, four Einsatzgruppen were initially created, each numbering 500 to around 900 men to compromise a total force of around 3,000. Each Einsatzgruppen was under the operational control of the higher SS police chiefs in its area of operations. Each death squad followed an assigned army group as they advanced into the Soviet Union. The 3,000 personnel of these Einsatzgruppen did not conduct these mass killings by themselves. Units of the Waffen-SS, the police, the Wehrmacht and allied soldiers, as well as local collaborators, aided them. The local population would help identify victims as well as kill them. Many of these killers and their victims knew one another as neighbours and colleagues. A massacre typically began when Jews and other victims would be rounded up and ordered to report to a central destination. The victims would then be marched or transported to a killing site. If a mass grave had not been already dug, the victims would be forced to dig one. They would then be stripped of their clothes and valuables and driven into groups into the pits that they would be dug. The Einsatzgruppen and their assistants either shot the victims at the edge of the pit so that they fell in or forced them into a grave to be shot. Families and friends often had to watch their loved ones die before them. Over two days in September 1941, a small detachment of Einsatzgruppen C, along with larger units of the Waffen-SS, the police, Ukrainian auxiliaries, conducted a mass shooting of Jews at Baba Yar, a ravine outside of Kiev. Reports were sent in to Einsatzgruppen headquarters in Berlin that around 33,771 Jews were massacred during this two-day period. The mass shootings were resource-intensive, requiring many shooters and escort guards, as well as weapons, ammunition and transport. Concerns about the inefficiency of the shootings and their psychological impact on the shooters, many of these troops found the massacres to be difficult, if not impossible, to perform. Some of the perpetrators suffered terrible physical and mental health problems, and many turned to drink and drugs. This led to the development of special vans, outfitted with engines that pumped carbon monoxide into sealed passenger compartments. Jews would then be packed into the van compartments, driven to mass graves, many asphyxiating during the journey. It took much longer to kill very large groups of victims with the gas vans. Einsatzgruppen personnel were also required to remove the bodies and clean the compartments. Throughout the German occupation of the seized Soviet territories, mass shootings continued to be the preferred method of murdering. At least 1.5 million and possibly more than 2 million Holocaust victims died in mass shootings or gas vans in the Soviet territories. After the close of World War II, senior leaders of the Einsatzgruppen would be prosecuted. 14 death sentences and two life sentences were among the judgments. However, only four executions were carried out and on June the 7th, 1951, the rest were reduced to lesser sentences. Four additional Einsatzgruppe leaders were later tried and executed by other nations. Most of the perpetrators of these war crimes were never charged, and they returned unremarked to civilian life to carry on as normal. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please do like and subscribe, and follow for more content. If you're an audio listener, head over to my YouTube and TikTok channels, where I have a lot more content as well. And if you're watching my videos, head over to my podcast where I also have a lot more stuff coming out on there as well. Thank you for listening and watching and I'll see you on the next one.